Good afternoon and welcome to St. George's as we start this celebration of life. Please join us in our opening hymn, Here I Am, Lord. It is number 777 found in the Blue Gather Hymnals. 777, Here I Am, Lord. Please rise. <laughs> I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I, who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion with the Holy Spirit be with you. In the waters of baptism, Marlene died with Christ and rose with him to a new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. 
we sprinkle Marlene's casket with the water this font. As a reminder in baptism, she died with Christ. Now in death, may she live with him forever. We now place the pall upon Marlene's casket. As a reminder in death, she is clothed with the immortality of Christ. We now place the cross upon Marlene's casket as a symbol of our faith that Jesus suffered and died for us so that we would be saved. Let us pray. God of loving kindness, listen favorably to our prayers. Strengthen our belief that your son has risen from the dead and our hope that your servant Marlene will also rise again. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in unity with the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Please be seated for our readings. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything, and there's a time for every matter under heaven, a time to give birth, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to, time to uproot what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to shun embracing. A time to search and a time to give up as lost. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear apart and a time to sew together. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What benefit is there for the worker from that in which he labors. I have seen the task which God has given the sons of mankind with which to occupy themselves. He has made everything appropriate in its time. He has also sent, set eternity in their heart without the possibility that mankind will find out the work which God has done from the beginning even to the end. The word of the Lord. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. 
shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your road and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into A reading from the first letter of Saint. Hmm. Saint Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of a command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, 
of today, close to my word, keep faithful, for your faithfulness, I will give you the crown of life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Now that very day, the first day of the week, two of the disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in and stayed with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were open, and they recognized him but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the 11 and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. First of all, I want to take this opportunity to uh, welcome uh, Father John, who's a priest and a brother and also a cousin to Jaffa. Um, the family certainly appreciates your prayers and your support, your presence here today. Well, on behalf of uh, St. George's Parish, I want to extend to you, Jeff, uh, to Jake. I understand that Kelsey and um, Kayla are, are sick right now, but we extend all of our prayers and condolences to you and to the rest of the family and friends who are gathered here today. Uh, you certainly do are in our prayers and will continue to be so. The Kuzma family, I've known for over 35 years. It all started at St. Matthew's in the Woods uh, when I was assigned there as a seminarian and was ordained there, actually, and stayed a year after ordination. And uh, A lot of familiar faces here. I look to the second pew. I see Joe and Roberta. I see Greg. uh, Of course, Deacon. um, um, Yeah. (laughs) Well, anyways, I know Frank because Joe and Frank came here, and Glenn, the deacon, uh, was part of, you know, the, the church here, and uh, many other the, the Kuzmas that are here, so it's certainly a long history, and um, you know, and I very much appreciate. Uh, Jeff invited me out uh, a month ago uh, to anoint Marlene, and uh, you gave me the grand tour. You know, we uh, toured the whole property and the side by side, going down by the river. You know, and I, I, I appreciated the obituary how she enjoyed uh, the many walks and, and conversations you had, walking the many trails, and of course her passion for deer hunting, uh, about a dozen tree stands on the property, you know, and I have a passion for hunting too. We certainly connected well that day to, to a beautiful piece of property and, and just a piece, of, a piece of God's country, really, the beautiful home that you built there and uh, sharing with me uh, a number of the photo albums, you know, the trip to Africa and uh, her teaching and uh, a number of things. Her Steelers, you know, that she loved her Steelers. But, you know, I saw pictures of that. Even last night at the funeral home, you know, uh, I loved how she said she'd yell at those Steelers when they weren't doing so well. And uh, her passion for many other things is highlighted in our obituary. But, but certainly, of all the things that Marlene enjoyed and had passion for, uh, we'd have to say teaching was one of, she was made for teaching. 
uh, as, as Jeff described the man. And certainly, uh, your presence here today, this is the Union City School District that's closed today, and your presence here today, many of the teachers and administrators certainly speak well to the kind of teacher and the, the person that uh, Marlene truly was. Um, you know, I think if I were to ask everyone here, who was your favorite teacher going through school? And you know, I think we could all come up with that individual in our mind of who that would be. You know, now, what's interesting, we, we might ask ourselves, geez, I don't even remember what they taught. I don't remember what they said. But it was something about that person uh, that just stood out for us. They had a significant impact upon us. And that was Marlene. Marlene certainly brought a certain presence, uh, a certain uh, commitment to the, the students that she served. Uh, you know, I like that reference again that, you know, she had her three children, along with Jeff and her had the three children, but uh, she had a, a lot more children. Her kids, as she referred to, uh, talked well to that personal relationship uh, that she had in the classroom and with many of her students. Um, you know, teaching certainly is an important role that we play here in our society because we have access to literally hundreds and hundreds, if not a few thousand children throughout our teaching career. The impact that we can have on their lives to inspire them, to help them to grow, to mature, to become good citizens, and in this case, good followers of Christ, you know, here at our Catholic school. Um, and we, we, we certainly know that... Um, that the children uh, certainly look to the, the fine example uh, of our teachers and, the, and staff, and Marlene certainly served to that purpose. Well, you know, today we, we gather together, and of course we, um, we tell Marlene's story. We continue to uh, look at the pictures that were at the funeral home. We continue to uh, tell the story, share our uh, fond remembrances of her, how she touched our own life and that intimate relationship that she shared with. And, but also, we come to tell the story. It's the story of our faith, you know, because we speak yet of another significant individual, uh, one of the greatest teachers ever to live, and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Because we know that Jesus came, he taught, he preached, he healed, he performed miracles, uh, he did God's will. In doing so, uh, Jesus had an impact on all humanity one of the most significant individuals to live in all of our human history. But Jesus Christ, you know, he, what made him such a powerful teacher is that he taught in the forms of parables. He talked about the kingdom of God. You know, he used earthly examples to speak of what our experience of what the kingdom of God might be like. You know, and there's just dozens of examples of how Jesus referred to that, that kingdom in which we long for. You know, that kingdom that we enter into once we go through the transition of death. You know, that, that we have that hope and belief that death is not the end, but it marks a new beginning, a new beginning, a new relationship. The God who certainly created us, the God who loves us throughout the whole of our lives, is the same God who welcomes us into that eternal embrace, that embrace that will last forever. And so, you know, we certainly are grateful for all of that which Jesus did for us. And the greatest lesson, of course, that he taught us was that, uh, you know, we, we die to self. We die to sin. We, we, we rise with him in the resurrection of new hope. And, and this marks our baptism. Marlene was baptized many, many years ago, uh, that, that dying to self and rising with him. You know, we sprinkled the casket as a reminder that in baptism she died with Christ. Now in death, may she live with him forever. And Jesus gives us that perfect example as we just celebrated here a few weeks ago on Good Friday that Jesus so much loved us that he was willing to put it on the line so that we would be saved, that Jesus went to his own cross willingly for each one of us, that he suffered and died a horrendous death, but yet death was not the end. Jesus rose on the third day, and because of that, he's no longer just some significant historical figure that we look back on, but Jesus is now the living Savior of us all, that he continues to be present in the life of his church even today. And how is that possible? Through the gift of the Holy Spirit, that that Spirit continues to be a part of our lives, that, that Spirit that unites with our own Spirit, that Spirit that calls us back home to the Lord, that we are united uh, in grace with the the powerful presence of our God. And so we continue to commend the soul of our sister Marlene and to God's everlasting care uh, that she will continue to have um, that, that presence of God ever made manifest to her. 
And we ask that God's spirit to be with us as well, that we who mourn for the loss of our sister, that we might find consolation and peace, that we know that one day we too will join her with all the saints uh, as we continue to place our faith in him. So let us continue to celebrate our faith. Let us continue to pray that the Lord Jesus Christ looks lovingly upon all of us as we continue to pray for our sister Marlene, as she will be, we one day will be joined with her in the kingdom of God, which Jesus taught us. Please stand. My friend, Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord. We join our prayers to his. Our response today is hear our prayer. In baptism, Marlene received the light of Christ, scatter the darkness now, and lead her over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Our sister Marlene was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all those whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. The family and friends of Marlene seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain, and dispel the darkness and doubt that come with grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Marlene. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for our presentation of the gifts. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, that you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God, 
and live. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I will give you rest. If you pass through raging waters in the sea, you shall not drown. If you walk amid the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side, know that I am with you through it all. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I will give you rest. Please pray. Pray, my friends, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant, Marlene, who has journeyed from this world, may, be, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed of sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection is dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Please sit or kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Marlene, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Then from the earth you will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, and you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours 
now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said you're apostle, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. shelter of the Lord who abide in his shadow for life say to the Lord my refuge my rock in whom I trust and he will raise you up on eagle's wing bear you on the breath of dawn make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand the snare of the faller will never capture you and famine will bring you no fear under his wings your refuge is faithfulness your shield and he will raise you up on eagle's wings bear you on the breath of dawn make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of 
of his hand. You need not fear the terrors of the night, nor the air or the flies by day, nor the houses fall about you. Near you it shall not come, and he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm. Of his hand. You need not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, though the houses fall about you, near you it shall not come. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his For to his angels is given a command to guard you in all of your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And he will raise you up on eagle swings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand, and hold you Hold you in the palm of his
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, that your servant Marlene, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for our eulogy. On behalf of our family, um, we would like to extend a thank you for over the last couple years um, today, and I'm sure in the future. I was not originally reading this today. I am reading the words of my cousin Kaylee, who could not be here today. As a child, I was a bit of a bookworm, so you can imagine that we got on board with the whole Harry Potter craze. Mom used to pre-order the books for us, and it was always the most exciting day, her driving us in, feeling the weight of the books, and smelling the crisp new book smell. I'd be reading in the car before the doors were even closed. Mom was always supportive of any of our interests like that. I don't think I quite have the words to express what the last few days have been like since Mom's passing. Surreal, maybe? On the day she passed, I drove home, and in the wake of the grief, I prayed hoping for any kind of sign that my mom was okay, that everything was going to be okay. As I got home, I welcomed any sort of mind-numbing distraction, and of all the things, I had a strong urge to watch Harry Potter. So we turned on the third movie, and as we watched, two quotes caught my attention. I did not realize it until the end of the movie, but this particular book, above all others, most directly explored the concept of parental loss. The quote that first sparked my attention was that happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. My mind was so clouded by sadness and I realized I needed to remember the good things like our book trips. I needed to think about who my mom was as a person and why I loved her so much. And so I'd like to share with you who my mom was to her children and family, though some of the fond and through some of the fondest memories of her. First and foremost, mom was patient. She worked with children, so that says something. But if you know the Kuzmas and to live with four of them, well, I think that just about speaks for itself. And I'd say she probably deserves sainthood for that alone. But along with this, mom was just so content with being. If she was with her family, her friends, or her dogs, she was happy. This blissful way of being led to many wonderful memories, including opening day hunts, bundled up in our tree stand, lazy day creek floats, sporadic shopping trips, vacations to sunny beaches, bison jams in Yellowstone, horseback riding through the Tetons, and hiking to mountain side hot springs in Idaho. If we could equate events into terms of fulfillment, mom led a very rich life. While she had this mellow way of embracing life's adventures, one of the things I loved most about mom was her enthusiasm for all things. Of course, she was easily excited about the big things like graduations, engagements, weddings, babies, but she seemed to be able to find whimsical sense of joy in the daily nuances, from blasting journey and singing during our weekly house cleans to being excited for something as simple as a new couch pillow. I'm sure this is why she got along with kids so well and why she was such an amazing teacher. I'll never forget the day I got a glimpse of her teaching personality. It was after I'd gotten my first job offer. Mom was the first person who wanted to know and the first person that I wanted to tell. When I called her, she was teaching, of course. She answered her phone she, and, and spoke to her class telling them, it's my daughter, she had an interview. This was followed by some oohs and ahs from her kids, so she must have been sharing this with them. She told, uh, she told them to get out their workbooks, to which I heard the most pitiful little groans and protests. Mom just laughed and the kids did what she asked. When I told her the news, she yelled, she got the job, which was followed by an adorable little chorus of background cheers and a loud cheer from my mom. The entire scene was so very my mom and so wonderful. These kids didn't care about me or my job, but mom's joy and excitement was infectious and they were excited because she was excited. 
Well, I know mom missed her kids at school when she started treatment. I'd say she had a pretty suitable replacement unfold, a new role that she had wanted for a long time, and that is getting the title of grandma. With the birth of her first great granddaughter, Della, I was told recently by one of my mom's friends that mom told her Wednesdays are my best days because that was the day she got to watch Della. I love that mom had so many good months with Dell. She never lost her childlike spirit, and I think that's why kids, and especially Della, seem to love her. In this time, I was able to see her rock Della to sleep, make silly noises with her, sing her ABCs, and teach her what turkeys say. She was the first to teach Della how to stick out her tongue and make noises, and she always amazed and amused, was always amazed by amu and amused by how loudly Della could fart. She gave Della her special nickname, Lala, and would make Del smile every time she'd sing her Del Lala to her. I think it's almost, it's almost the most heartbreaking that she will never get to see Della or her other grandchildren grow old. But while bittersweet those time, as bittersweet as those times were, I am still grateful for the memories of all of the love they shared and the time that they got together. Well, mom spending time with Della meant that I got to spend a great amount of time with mom too. Our last real conversation I had had with mom before talking became too challenging was actually about motherhood. I needed her to know that I now understand how hard it is, how tiring it is, how much of a sacrifice it is, and how thankless it can be, and how often you feel underappreciated for it, but also how absolutely fulfilling it can be. I wanted her to know that her time and effort was, in love was valued and acknowledged just how much of herself she put into raising the three of us. I told her I often hear people discussing uh, what they like or the things that they want to do or don't want to do. But growing up, I only saw the opposite. I saw so many things that I admired and wanted to emulate. Her patience, her silliness, her happiness, her empathy, her love, and a slew of others. I told her she was everything we needed and then some. In that moment, she thanked me. And she told me that she thought I was doing a wonderful job too. I could not believe that in this time when she had every right to focus on herself, she was still thinking about me and my feelings. She was so selfless. She was so good at, she was so good at that. She had this impeccable way of listening without judgment and trying to fix your problems. She always knew just what to say to make you feel like everything was gonna be all right, even when the cards didn't seem to think so. In the last week, I've often thought if I could only talk to mom, I know she could help ease some of this sadness. And then I think again to Harry po the Harry Potter movies. In the final scene, Harry is told, but know this, the ones who love us never really leave us. You can always find them right here. So that is what I plan to do. I will carry these pieces of my mom, this light with me always. I hope that her memory will live on through me and my family and everyone here whose lives were touched in some way by her presence. So the next time you interact with someone challenging, be patient. When someone you love is struggling, lend them your ears. If someone shares good news, be their number one fan. If the Steelers are on, yell at the TV. And if you see a dog, give them all the pats. If you're with your children or grandchildren, be a goofball. And most of all, love those around you unconditionally. Let's all be a little more like mom. Thank you. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. Her farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Darkness, there is.
is no more a night, no more a night. There will be no more sadness, only joy and light, joy and light. Lift your heart. Rejoice and sing, for you are home. At last and forever, in the arms of the Holy One. Go in peace, God be with you. Go in peace, be at rest with the saints and the angels. Now you are free. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Marlene and the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which are bestowed upon Marlene in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship in the saints of Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith. Until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever, we ask this through Christ our Lord. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. The mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand. As a shelter for all who will call on God's name, sing the praise and the glory of God. Could the Lord ever leave you? Could the Lord forget his love? Though a mother forsake her child, he will not abandon you. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all will call on God's name, sing the praise and the glory of God. Should you turn and forsake him, he will gently call your name. Should you wander away from him, he will always take you back. All the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand. As a shelter for all who will call on God's name, sing the praise and the glory of God. Go to him when you're weary. He will give you eagle's wings. You will run and never tire, for your God will be your strength. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand. 
as a shelter for all who will call on God's name, sing and praise and the glory of God. As he swore to your fathers when the flood destroyed the land, he will never forsake you. He will swear to you again. And though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on God's name, sing the praise and the glory of God. 